Shalom again. I'm Elder Pop Samuel from the tribe of Judah. I told you in the previous uh, video about Gentiles, that was titled Gentiles, that I'll be breaking down some things that's, uh, that the Gentiles also um, they suffered the curses also. They suffered the curses spiritually. Um, here at Elders of Israel, we teach spiritual precepts. Carnal precepts are easy to figure out. It's the spiritual precepts that God wants you to, to get, the understanding. It's a double meaning. He wants you to go to the spiritual side, not the carnal side. That's easy to figure out. He wants you to understand him spiritual. Spiritual. You must worship him in spirit and in truth. Could it because it is a spiritual law. It actually is a spiritual law. And some of it gonna be broke down today. And uh being old, I'm gonna jump right into it. I speak to the Gentiles. And if you're not a Gentile, you're free to watch also. Um the first scripture I want to go to is John chapter 1 and verse 11. And we're going to read a little bit. John chapter 1 verse 11. He came unto his own and his own received him not. But as many as received him to them gave he power to become the sons of God. God gave the power to the ones that he wanted to have because he went to his own he said Christ his words to his own but they received him not so he gave power to someone else this is what he's saying read that again he came unto his own and his own received him not but as many as received him to give to them, gave he power to become the sons of God. He said, I can give the power to them also to be the sons of God. Did y'all get that? Read it again. He came unto his own, and his own received him not. But as many as received him to them, gave he power to become the sons of God. Even to them that believe on his name, even of them, meaning a different set of people, believe on his name, which were born, not of blood, carnal blood, nor of the will of the flesh, meaning not carnal, not born of carnal, nor of the will of man, but of God. Say, man can't do this. God said, but he can do it. Okay? Let's prove that point. Go to John 3 and 6. And we're going to come right back to this. Um, John chapter 1. John chapter 3 verse 6. That which is born of a flesh, carnal, is flesh. And that was which is born of the spirit is spirit. You have a carnal seed. God has a spiritual seed. That's what he's saying. So we're going to go to Luke chapter 8 verses 11 to prove that point. Because this, this is the seed what Abraham sold. Now the parable is this. The seed is the word of God. It's a spiritual seed where God goes on. That was born of God. Let's go back to John chapter 1. And let's read that again, verse 12. But as many as received him to, to them, gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. Hmm. Believe. Hmm. A lot of people believe that Christ exists. A lot of people believe that. But let's get deep in what he's talking about because it's spiritual. 
Let's go to 1 John chapter 3 and verse 22. And if this is too hard for you to understand, turn the channel. Because I'm speaking to the Gentiles. And whoever else want to listen to, you can listen. Because I came to my own, they received me not. So I'm going to the Gentiles. I'm doing the same thing that Christ did. 1 John chapter 3 and verse 22. And it reads, and whatsoever we ask, we received of him, because we keep his commandments. So if you believe it, you will keep his commandments. Remember, what is born of spiritual is spiritual. So if you keep his spiritual commandments, that's what he's talking about, spiritual. And do those things that are pleasing in his sight, meaning God, pleasing to God. No man but to God. Verse 23, and this is his commandment, that we should believe on the name of his son, Jesus Christ, and love one another as he gave us commandment. Verse 24, and he that keepeth his commandments dwelleth in him, and he in him, and hereby we know that he abideth in us by the Spirit. See that? By the spirit which he has given us. A spirit, spirit, spiritual seed. Because that's what was sown. Luke chapter 8, verse 11. Everyone won't get this because it's a carnal precept. They tend to go to the carnal side. He wants you to go to the spiritual side. Okay. Let's go to Acts verse 28 and 20. And we're going to read verse 28 through 31. And please write, write me, and um, I'll answer all questions, and they're going to come out the Bible. Spiritual precepts, spiritual understanding. Acts chapter 28 and verse 28, and it reads, Be it known therefore unto you that the salvation of God is sent unto the Gentiles, and he that will hear it unto the Gentiles, and that they will hear it. The Gentiles will hear it. Mm. Let's prove it. Let's get reading. And when he had said these words, the Jews departed. Mm. They departed. They got upset. Mm. Let's read verse 29. Acts chapter 28 and 29. And when he had said these words, the Jews departed. And had great reasoning among themselves. Hmm. We're going to find out why they had a reasoning. And Paul dwelt two whole years in his own iron house. And received all that came in unto him. So when the Jews left, he was still teaching some people. Hmm. The Gentiles. Because we read earlier, they're going to hear it. Verse 28. Deuter, uh, Acts chapter 28 and 28. Be it known therefore unto you that the salvation of God is sent unto the Gentiles and that they will hear it. The Gentiles are going to hear it. Verse 29. And when he had said these words, the Jews departed. They got upset. That's why they departed. And had great reasoning among themselves. Verse 20, and Paul dwelt two whole years in his own hired house and received all that came in unto him. So when the Jews left, who did he teach? The Gentiles, because they were listening. Acts 28 and 31, preaching the kingdom of God and teaching those things which concern the Lord Jesus Christ, which is the word John 1 and 1. With all confidence, no man for, forbidding him. Hmm. With all confidence. I mean, he didn't care. Let's go to prove that point. And then we're going to go to uh, uh, explain the Jews to part. Hmm. Let's go to Acts chapter 4 and 31. 
Because Paul was very bold. He didn't care. He spoke the word of God to everyone, whoever came in. Even when the Jews left, he kept teaching the Gentiles because they listened. Good, uh, Acts chapter 4 and verse 31. And when they had prayed, the, the place was shaken where they were assembled together. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. And they spake the word of God with boldness. You see that? Boldness. And the multitude, that's why the Gentiles come in. Of them that believe were all were of one heart, one mind, Matthew 15 and 19, write that down, and of one soul. Neither said any of them that all of the things which he possessed was his own, but they had all things coming, and with great power gave the possible witness of the resurrection of the Lord Jesus. And great grace was upon them all. See, the Jews was upset because the Most High was giving the kingdom to the Gentiles also. The true Gentiles. Hmm. Let's prove that point. Let's go to um, Romans chapter 11. And verse 10. And we're going to start at Romans chapter 11. No, Romans chapter 10. And we're going to read verse 19. Romans chapter 10, verse 19. But I say, did not Israel know? This is Moses. First, first Moses said, I will have broke. Let's go to Romans chapter 10 and verse 19. But I say, did not Israel know? First Moses said, I will provoke you to jealousy by them. There are no people. And by a foolish nation, I will anger you. Because this nation did not have the spiritual law of God. But they're going to learn. Verse 20. But Isaiah is very bold and said, I was found of them that sought me not. I was made manifest unto them that asked not after me. Did you see that? But the Israel, he said, all day long, many of the carnal Israel, because it's two Israels, and we'll bring that up. It's four different types of Israels. It's uh, the progenitor. His name was Jacob, was trained to Israel. It was also um, the carnal Israel, the whole nation of Israel, the carnal nation of Israel. Then there's the northern kingdom, was Israel, and Judah was the southern kingdom when it was split. Then there's a spiritual Israel, and we'll get that right after this. Four different types of Israel was mentioned in the Bible. But let's go and read uh, Romans chapter 10, verse 11. But to Israel, he said, all day long I have stretched forth my hands unto a disobedient and gainsaying people. How long do you think God be going to reach, be holding out his arm? This is God. We're going to come back to this, uh, Romans chapter 11. But I want to show you that it's a carnal Israel. Then there's a spiritual Israel. Okay. Let's go to Isaiah chapter 8. And we're going to start um, at 13. Isaiah chapter 8 verse 13. Sanctify the Lord of hosts himself and let him be your fear. And let him be your dread. And he shall be for a sanctuary, but for a stone of stumbling. We're going to read about that stumbling. And for a rock of offense to both, both, both the houses of Israel, the corner of Israel. See that? 
See that? And the spiritual Israel. For a jan and for a snare to the inhabitants of Jerusalem. Let's go to, because he mentioned stumbling block. Then we'll go back to Romans chapter 11. He mentioned a stumbling block. Go to Ezekiel chapter 3 and 17. It's precepts in here that are stumbling blocks. The carnal um, precepts you can you will stumble on. The spiritual precepts you won't stumble on. It's carnal precepts, spiritual precepts. You have a carnal body, you have a spiritual body. So we're going to go to Ezekiel chapter 3 and verse 17. Son of man, I have made thee a watchman unto the house of Israel. Therefore hear the word at my mouth and give them warning unto me. When I say unto the wicked, thou shalt surely die, and thou givest him not warning, nor speakest to the warn the wicked from his wicked way, to save his people, the same wicked man shall die in his iniquity. That's sin. He will die in his sin. But his blood will I require at thine hand. Yet if thou warn the wicked, and he turn not from his wickedness, nor from his wicked way, he shall die in his iniquity, his sin. But thou hast delivered thy soul. So I must tell you this. Again, verse 20. When a righteous man doth turn from his righteousness and, could, and commit iniquity, which is sin, and I lay a stumbling block. Remember we read that. In Isaiah chapter 8, verse 13 and 14, a stumbling block before him, he shall die. Because thou hast not given him warning. He shall die in his sin, and his righteousness, which he hath done, shall not be remembered. He'll, he won't remember. But his blood will I require at his hand. You see that? It's a stumbling block. All through this Bible, there are stumbling blocks. So, we're going to go back to Romans chapter 11. And we're going to start it at verse 1. I say then, have God cast away his people? God forbid. This is Paul talking. For I also am an Israelite of the seed of Abraham, of the tribe of Benjamin. He's telling no, God had not cast them away. Because he's given them a chance. Because by now, God would have got rid of us if he didn't have, didn't have mercy and grace. And a lot of us taking it for granted now. Because we're still being foolish. How long will you think God going to hold out his arm for the so-called Israelite? The Gentiles going to come into the kingdom. And we're going to get the precepts now. Now, let's go. See, let's read what King David was saying. Uh, Romans chapter 11, verse 7. This is Paul. He's going to start quoting what King David had said also. What then? Israel have not obtained that which he seeketh for, but the election have obtained it, and the rest were blinded. The lecture obtained it. They understood it, to do exactly what God said do. According as it is written, God has given them the spirit of slumber. See, stumbling block. Eyes that they should not see. They can't see spiritually. And ears that they should not hear. Spiritually, they can't hear. Unto this day. And David said, let their table be a snare and a trap and a stumbling block. Reading these precepts, a lot of us tend to read it carnally. That's the stumbling block. You must worship him in spirit and truth, reading it spiritually. And a recompense unto them. Let their eyes be darkened. They can't even see it. That they may not see and bow down their back weight always. I say then, 
Have they stumbled that they should fall? God forbid. This is Paul. But rather through their fall, salvation is come unto the Gentiles for to provoke them to jealousy. God is still trying to make you jealous for us as Israelites to come back in. Because the Gentiles are going to get the kingdom. We're bringing up after this. Knowing the fall of them be riches of the world and the diminution of them, the riches of the Gentiles. How much more of their fullness? For I speak to the Gentiles, and so much as a, I am apostle of the Gentiles, I magnify my office. But, if, but I mean, I'm sorry, verse 14. If by any means I may provoke to immolation, may bring back to make you jealous, God still having mercy on Jacob's seed, his carnal seed, them that which are my flesh, which is an Israelite, and might save some of them. For if the casting away of them be the reconciling, bring back of the world, the word, the world, I'm sorry, what shall the receiving of them be but life from the dead? For if the first roots be holy, the law is also holy. And if the root be holy, so are the branches. And if some of the branches be broken off, and thou be a wild olive tree, which is a man, tree is a man, according to Mark chapter 8, verse 24, were grafted in among them, and them, and with them, partakers of the root. And fatness, meaning takers of the root. You take God's law and be rooted into it. And, fight it, and fatness of the olive tree boast not against the branches, but if thou boast, thou bearest not the fruit, but the root thee. Thou wilt say then, the branches were broken off that I might be grafted in. Verse 20, well, because of unbelief, they were broken off. They were broken off. But the Gentiles going to be grafted in. And thou standest by faith. Faith. Meaning if they pick up, pick up this spiritual law by faith, like the Greek woman and the Canaanite woman, that Christ healed by their faith, he gave mercy. These Gentiles be grafted in. But not how minded, but fear. Did y'all see that? Let's go to uh, as soon as these Gentiles hear it, Psalms 1844. Because we read about the Jews left in Acts chapter 28 and 8, uh, 28 through uh, 31, 32. They left. The Gentiles stayed. Psalm 18 and 44. And it reads, As soon as they hear of me, they shall obey me. This is God talking. The strangers shall submit themselves unto me. Verse 45. Psalms 18 and 45. The strangers shall fade away and be afraid out of their closed places. The strangers going to fade away because they are not going to be strangers anymore. They're going to be converted. Hmm. Let's prove that point. Let's go to um, in the class we're going to prove that point. Um, go to Mark chapter 16 and 15. And he said unto them, Go ye into the, all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. That's one of the mistakes that happened to the so-called Jacob and Israel. That was one of the commandments. They're supposed to talk to strangers, the Gentiles. We're going to get into that. God read, as soon as they hear, they're going to change. They're going to jump to it. 
Let's prove that point. Let's go to John chapter 5 and 3. Because see, they've been waiting on this. After this, there was a feast of the Jews. And Jesus went up to Jerusalem. Now there is at Jerusalem by the sheep, market of, market of pool, which is called in the Hebrew tongue, Bethsaida, having five porches. Verse 3 is very interesting right here. And these lay a great multitude, that's where the Gentiles come in, of important folk, of blind, halt, withered, waiting for the moving of the water. They waiting on the word of God. Let's break this down. Great multitude. Hmm. Uh, I broke this down in the previous class. And I'm going to break down today what was Abraham and Isaac were doing. What they teaching Gentile. Hmm. We'll find out. Let's go to Exodus chapter 12 and 38. This is when the children of Israel were coming out of Egypt. Go, we're going to start at Exodus chapter 12 and 37. And the children of Israel sojourned from Ramses to Sukkot, about 600,000 on foot that were men beside children. Verse 38. And a mixed multitude went up also with them, and flocks and herds, even even very much cattle. I broke that down in previous class so you can read that. But my point is the mixed multitude. So we go back to John chapter 5 verse 3. And these lay a great multitude of important folk of blind, halt, withered, waiting for the moving of the war. I broke this down. The great multitude, we just it's a great multitude of mixed people. Important folks. Acts chapter 4 Verse 9 through 10. If we this day be examined of the good deed done to the important man, see that? By what means he is made whole. Made whole. Be it known unto you all and to all the people of Israel that by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom ye crucified, whom God raised from the dead, even by him does this man stand here before you whole. See, they want to be made whole. They say, let's go back to John 5 and 3, and they mention blind. Matthew 15 and 31. And so much that the multitude wondered. They wondered. They looked for this war. When they saw the dawn to speak, the man to be whole, the lame to walk, and the blind to see, spiritual eyes. And they glorify the God of Israel. You see that? Verse 20, uh, 32, Matthew 15, 32. Then Jesus called the disciples unto him and said, I have compassion on the multitude because they continue with me now three days and have nothing to eat. And I will not send them away fasting, lest they faint in the way. Y'all see that? It's all types of people around Christ. It's a mixed multitude. It's a multitude of people. The so-called white people. The so-called Chinese people. Japanese people. The African people. Black people. It's a mixed multitude of people. The war, let's go back to John chapter 5 and verse 3. And these lay a great multitude and potent folk of blind, halt with wither, waiting for the moving of the water. It said wither because man is a tree. Mark chapter 8, verse 24. He's withered. He waited on some water from God, which is Christ. The Gentile. 
John 4 and 14. Because we got to find out what water is. John chapter 4 and verse 14. But whosoever drinketh of the water that I shall give him shall never thirst. See that? Meaning the word of God. Spiritual water. But the water that I shall give him shall be in, be in him a well of water. Remember that well. Well. Because that's what Abraham was digging. That's what Isaac was digging. A well. Why were they digging a well? And people covering it up. What kind of well was it? Was it carnal well? Or was it a spiritual well? I'll read that again. John chapter 4 and verse 14. Who, but whosoever drinketh of the water that I shall give him shall never thirst. But the water that I shall give him shall be in him a well of water, springing up into everlasting life. You see that? This is the well that he's talking about. So we're going to go through some precepts. Because I'm going to bring this up, that well of war. That's very interesting. And I'm going to break down the Deuteronomy chapter 28 and 48 spiritually. Because it covers the Gentiles and the people that went into captivity carnally and spiritually. Which are the Israelites. Israel. But it happened to the Gentiles spiritually. 